you guys. Um, I'm just out here in my garden and I wanted to do a quick little project. Um, I picked up this adorable little small drop leaf side table that I, and it's super weathered and awesome looking. Um, I thought it'd be perfect um, instead of like a full restoration for something like this um, to do just, I like the look of it now so I'm going to do a little bit of sanding on it show you some of the things I like to use to do that um, and then it's gonna be great to be outside in the garden and let it weather even more and just have a beautiful little side table so I'm really excited so let's get started so first of all because it's super worn especially on the top the sides are a little less worn um, I'm just going to um, pretty much just sand it now you could paint it um, or restain it if you wanted you could definitely restore it um, this is, I like the look of the weathered stuff, especially for my garden stuff, that's what my chairs are and another table that I have is. So what I want to do is just kind of preserve the look that it has now, but I want to sand it the sides and the bottom. Um, and then I'm going to do a clear coat over the top just to let this look last as long as possible because it'll be outside, obviously, it's not going to last forever. But I want to get some of this orangeiness off because that doesn't match the top. So. What I like to use, my favorite tools are Ryobi. Um, they're super handy. This little sander has sanded probably 100 hours plus of sanding on all kinds of things and it works so well. So you just need a, a sander and a felt, a the big one if you want. This one's really handy though. Um, and then different grits of sandpaper. So I bought this gigantic box of multiple grits um, to have on hand. Um, this one is not going to need a very um, low grit because there's not a whole lot to take off. So I would probably do like a eight. I think even 100 is too much. So I would do probably a 240 um, and do that on the top. Besides maybe a little bit more just because there's a little bit more to take off. Um, you'll probably go through a few of these and then also for the parts that may have a little more detail. I like to have, and this is what I use for my spoon making and stuff too, but I like to have sheets of it too because then you can tear it off like this and fold it and then you'll be able to get into all the creases and I'll show you that in just a moment. For the creases on here, there's not a whole lot to take off. Luckily it's pretty weathered um, and I'm not going to need to do a lot, but it does need some of this and grit. It looks like there's sand or something stuck to it from the previous owner. So I'm going to take a pretty light one. I'm going to do a 220 grit on this one take off a piece and I'm going to fold it so the rough side is out and then you're basically just doing like this and that'll just kind of get you into the crevices so you're not unless you like the look of that and that's fine too I'm not too worried about it it's going to be outside but if I was refinishing this for inside my house I'd probably want it to be a little more cleanly done um, and then I'm just going to kind of go along you could do this with the electric one, um, but I don't think it's needed for this particular project. But everything is, you can see, it's really coming off pretty easily. And it's just, oh, just a light sand on there. And then once I've sanded all of this, I'm going to wipe it down um, with a damp cloth, let it dry, and then we will go on to the next step. And while this is getting done, as soon as I'm done with that, I am going to work on the top. Okay, so I'm going to get these sides folded up because it'll be a lot easier to work with. And I can see that there is a heck of a lot of spider nests under here. So we'll get that cleaned up because we'll have to do the underside too because actually there's not much weathering on that, mainly because it was protected by the underneath. So I'm going to work on the top first and then we will get to the sides. Okay, so I've just finished with my handheld sander. I'm gonna go um, to do the top and do kind of a quick finishing uh, light sanding with a high grit sandpaper just to get any excess off. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it all down uh, with a damp cloth, let it dry, and then if you want, um, you can put your polyurethane on it, or if you're wanting to paint it, this is a great time to paint it after it's all dry. Get a nice smooth finish now. So, I'm gonna get all that done. Um, this may be something that I end up 
finishing like in the winter when I have more time as far as if I do want to have it not as a garden table and want to bring it in the house or something like that um, and then I can finish. What I ended up doing or not doing I guess is not completely taking all of the finish off from right underneath and that was mainly because um, at this point I am going to have it outside and the finish is almost totally complete underneath so that'll actually just help protect it for a little bit longer until I decide you know if I'm going to do a restoration on it or not um, and at that time then I'll send all of it off and go from there but for this time all that's going to do is help protect it I just pretty much wanted to get everything off that was flaking off and worn that would only get water under it and make it worse so I'm get this finished up get a clear coat on it and I'll show you the finished product <laughs> 